Hi, hello everyone. Welcome to Vaish IAS YouTube channel. This is continuation of Shankar IAS environment series. You can watch the chapters which are already covered in the playlist available in the channel. Do have a look at all other playlists which are designed for UPC. These are all part of our paid courses but if response is good they can be put here for free. So subscribe and leave a feedback comment. Serious aspirants can contact Vice Sir on WhatsApp 7200681675 anytime for test series details or foundational videos. This is chapter 18 Ocean Acidification, which is a primary concern for the environment and for all the living organisms in the present scenario. Oceans are an important reservoir for carbon dioxide. It absorbs one third of the carbon dioxide produced by human activities, thus buffering climate change. Ocean acidification is the change in ocean chemistry, lowering of ocean pH, that is increase in concentration of hydrogen ions driven by the uptake of carbon compounds by the ocean from the atmosphere. We know pH ranges from 0 to 14. pH less than 7 are acidic while pH greater than 7 are alkaline or basic with 7 being neutral. As the uptake of atmospheric carbon dioxide by the ocean increases, the concentration of hydrogen ions in the ocean increases, the concentration of carbonate ions decreases, the pH of the oceans decreases and they become less alkaline. This entire process is known as ocean acidification. So basically, atmospheric carbon dioxide is absorbed by the ocean, concentration of hydrogen ions increases, concentration of carbonate ions decreases, pH of the ocean decreases, making it less alkaline and more acidic. This is ocean acidification. What is carbon dioxide effect on ocean acidification? We'll go into the detail, but before that, let us see how it works. As there is increase of carbon dioxide, there is increase in the uptake of carbon dioxide by the ocean. There is increase in the concentration of hydrogen ions leading to ocean acidification. Due to this ocean acidification, coral reefs can't grow and there is less plankton production leading to less productive fisheries. The uptake of atmospheric carbon dioxide is occurring at a rate exceeding the natural buffering capacity of the ocean. pH of the ocean surface waters has decreased by about 0.1 pH unit. That is 26% increase in ocean hydrogen ion concentration since the beginning of the industrial revolution. Now the question with everyone is ocean currently has a pH around 8 and is basic. But... It is nearly impossible or chemically impossible for all of it to actually become a pH less than 7. Then why do we refer to ocean acidification? The answer is acidification is the direction of travel regardless of the starting point. It refers to lowering of pH from any starting point to any point on the pH scale. So it is not that ocean waters are turning into acidic. It is lowering of pH making the water or ocean bodies from more alkaline to less alkaline in nature. It is basically the direction of travel regardless of any starting point or end point. Forms of calcium carbonate. As we are dealing with ocean and ocean related aspects, it becomes important for us to know forms of calcium carbonate because these are minerals found in the shells of few of the aquatic organisms. So, it is important for us to know forms of calcium carbonate. Calcite and aragonite are two different forms of calcium carbonate. Calcite is the mineral form found in the shells of planktonic algae, amoeboid protists, some corals, echinoderms and some mollusks like oysters. It is relatively less soluble. Aragonite is more soluble form of calcium carbonate. They are found in most corals, sorry, it is found in most corals, most mollusks like that of snails as well as some species of algae. Influence of other factors, there are lot of other factors which influence the chemical reactions of carbon dioxide with water, thus leading to the effects of ocean acidification. Among them, acid rain and eutrophication are the important ones. As 
acid rain can have a pH between 1 and 6 and has imp impact on ocean chemistry, surface ocean chemistry. It has major effect on ocean acidification locally and regionally but very small on a global scale. Eutrophication, it is influx of nutrients to the water bodies, mostly nitrogen from agriculture, fertilizers and sewage. The resulting eutrophication leads to large plankton blooms and when these blooms collapse, they sink to the seabed. The respiration of bacteria while decomposing the algae leads to a decrease in seawater oxygen and increase in carbon dioxide, thus again reducing the pH. How it reacts? Ocean acidification is a summary or basically it summarizes several processes and reactions that occur when carbon dioxide reacts with water, with seawater. Two reactions are very important. First, the formation of carbonic acid with release of hydrogen ions. Carbon dioxide and water reacts to form carbonic acid, H2CO3, which then splits into hydrogen ions and bicarbonate ions. This carbonate hydrogen ions increases acidity and pH level is reduced. The second reaction is between carbonate ions and with hydrogen ion which has been obtained from the first reaction to form bicarbonate ions. The combined effect of these two reactions increases acidity and also lowers the availability of carbonate ions. Effect of ocean acidification. Sea water absorbs carbon dioxide to produce carbonic acid, bicarbonate and carbonate ions. These carbonate ions are essential to the calcification process which allows certain marine organisms to build their shells and skeletons which are made up of calcium carbonate mineral. Example, corals, mollusks, crustaceans and some planktons. However, increase in atmospheric carbon dioxide levels lead to decrease in pH level, increase in the concentration of carbonic acid and bicarbonate ions, causing decrease in the concentration of carbonate ions. So basically, hydrogen ions will be increased, carbonic acid concentration is increased, bicarbonate ions concentration is increased, but there will be a decrease in the concentration of carbonate ions and this decrease is this decrease will affect calcification process and it could prevent the formation of shells. This impact of ocean acidification has catastrophic consequences for water bodies and also for the marine species which are economically important. Mitigation. How to reduce the effects of this ocean acidification? Reducing carbon dioxide. Promoting government policies to cap carbon dioxide emissions, eliminate offshore drilling by advocating energy efficiency, alternative energy sources such as wind power and solar by adopting alternative energy sources we can reduce the effects. Saturation horizon. Deep and cold ocean waters are naturally undersaturated with carbonate ions causing the shells of most calcifying organisms to dissolve. Surface waters are oversaturated with carbonate ions and they do not dissolve shells of these organisms. So deep and cold ocean waters are undersaturated with carbonate ions causing the shells to dissolve. Surface waters are oversaturated with carbonate ions and thus they do not dissolve shells of these organisms. What is saturation horizon? It is the level below which calcium carbonate minerals undergo dissolution. Those organisms that can still survive below the saturation horizon do so because they have special mechanisms to protect their shells from dissolving. As ocean acidification causes this horizon to rise vertically in the water column, so more and more calcifying organism will be exposed to undersaturated water. Thus, more vulnerable to dissolution of shells and skeletons, 
the saturation horizon of calcite occurs at a greater ocean depth than that for aragonite because we know aragonite is more soluble than calcite but both horizons have moved closer to the surface presently when compared to the 1800s which is really dangerous for the calcifying organisms Chameleons are seen inhabiting almost all the parts of South India and west of the Ganges. However, they are rarely seen in areas that receive heavy rainfall. They are mostly arboreal, that is, they live on trees, found in trees or on smaller bushes. Ocean acidification and the short and long term fate of carbon in the system. On long time scales, that is over a period of several thousands of years, there is a natural balance maintained between the uptake and release of carbon dioxide on Earth. The carbon dioxide produced by volcanoes is taken up by plants for the production of organic matter and by rock weathering on land. However, rock weathering takes thousands of years so that it won't remove the current input of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and ocean that fast enough. On shorter time scales, ocean has an internal stabilizing feedback linking the ocean carbon cycle to the underlying carbonate rich sediment known as carbonate compensation. That is there is a link between the carbon cycle and the carbonate rich sediment that is formed after the Calcium carbonate sediments are settled at the bottom of the ocean. The upper layers of the ocean tend to be super saturated with calcium carbonate. So little dissolution takes place while the deep ocean is under saturated and carbonate is dissolved. The first boundary between these two states that is super saturated and under saturated states is known as the lysocline the depth at which dissolution strongly increases in the deep ocean. The calcium carbonate in the form of dead shells sink to the seabed and if the seabed is shallow majority is buried in the sediment and trapped for a long time but if it sinks in deep water, calcium carbonate is dissolved, thereby not locking the carbon for many years. The current increased rate of dissolution of atmospheric carbon dioxide into the ocean results in an imbalance in the carbonate compensation depth, the depth at which all carbonate is dissolved. As the pH of the ocean falls, it results in shallowing of the lysocline. That is the boundary between the supersaturated and un undersaturated state become less and the carbonate compensation depth also decreases, thus exposing more of the shells trapped in the sediments to undersaturated conditions, causing them to dissolve, which will help buffer ocean acidification as there are more carbonate ions available. But this takes a long time, long time of thousand years. Upwelling. Coastal regions experience upwelling events where deeper ocean water circulates onto continental shelves and near shore areas which exposes the productive upper ocean ecosystems to colder water containing more nutrients and more carbon dioxide. Ocean acidification makes the upper oversaturated layer of seawater shallower each year. These natural upwelling events will more often cause undersaturated water that is cool water, deep water to well up and flow to the shore. Periodic exposure to these may affect coastal marine organisms as they form shells and these marine organisms are not accustomed to such events and periodic exposure to these affect their communities. Winners and losers. Who are winners and losers of this ocean acidification process? As there is increased carbon dioxide uptake by the ocean bodies, the growth and level of photosynthesis of certain marine phytoplankton and plant species increase. Not necessary that it happens all the time. For others, higher carbon dioxide and rising acidity may have either negative or neutral effects on their physiology. 
Therefore, particular marine plants will be winners while others will be losers and some may show no signs of change but definitely there would be some kind of change in this process. The ultimate solution to halt this ocean acidification is reduction in atmospheric carbon dioxide levels and this should happen before it is too late. This is a very small chapter. Hope you all enjoyed this session. If yes, you can like the video and give your feedback in the comment section. Thank you.